Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today is Monday, which means it's time for an episode of Loadout, the series where you guys, the viewers, get to pick a gun and customization for me to use. The way you do this is you leave a comment down below letting me know what kind of weapon and accessories you'd like me to run with, and I will pick one of the top rated comments for the next episode. Today's top comment comes from Abdul Aziz, who says the Western Gunslinger. The primary weapon will be the Russian 1895 infantry or trench with iron sights and no bayonet. I decided to go with the infantry variant as uh, I tried the trench and just couldn't stand it. Then for the secondary weapon, it's the number three revolver. We have the freedom to use any gadgets we want. I chose to use the trip mine and the flare gun. And then for our grenade, we're just gonna be using the normal frag or stick grenade. And for our melee, we'll be using the bolo knife. Then he says, hello, level cap. I really like this series from the good old battlefield three days. I would like that you use the revolver more for CQC and the Russian in more mid-range combat. Thanks. And thank you, sir, for the comment. And yes, Battlefield 3 was the good old days very long ago at this point. Thanks for watching the channel for such a long time. Now back in Battlefield 3 and quite a bit in Battlefield 4, people would give me loadout comments to try and replicate the Wild West in the game. And it sometimes worked out, but often not so much because when you're running up against people with fully automatic assault rifles, you tended to die a lot. So if I could make it work, it would look cool. But Battlefield 1 is really more of the setting to try and run a loadout like this because a lot of the native guns in this game are bolt action or lever action rifles. And we've got some good old fashioned revolvers. Now, someone replied to this comment that you can't really have a Wild West loadout with a Russian weapon. However, the Russian 1895 is really just a Winchester 1895. Russia manufactured a huge amount of these uh, during and prior to the First World War. So even though it's called the Russian 1895, it is essentially an American made weapon or at least American designed in this case. And I thought I'd throw on the cool white and silver skin to this weapon. I've actually got a bunch of cool skins for the 1895 now. Um, and this one just kind of really sets it apart, makes it look much more elegant, maybe even royal, if you will. Looks like it could have been a weapon for a royal guard in some faction. I definitely like the look of it and it stands out a bit more than the standard weapon. Then again, you might not want to stand out as much, especially if you're playing on like a forest map or something thing where white might not blend in. Now I mentioned trying out the trench variant of this gun and the interesting thing about the 1895 is that the difference between the Russian 1895 infantry and the Russian 1895 trench is a completely different weapon. They're going to perform entirely differently, have different rates of fire, different damage models altogether. I know they're going to look identical for the most part, but uh, they're not going to play identical. And the thing that the Russian 1895 trench does is it allows you to fire incredibly fast, 124 rounds per minute, way, way faster, over twice as fast as the Russian 1895 infantry. The problem is that it doesn't have any sort of one shot kill potential and the damage drop off is pretty severe. It does 79 in close quarters and then drops off to 40. So that means uh, I was like three shotting people at further ranges, which for me for a lever action rifle is really not acceptable and it, it makes it very difficult to use. It is fun and kind of cool, but uh, very far from effective. Now the 1895 infantry has the exact same damage drop off as the sniper, which means it starts off doing 80 damage, then it ramps up to 100 damage at its sweet spot, which goes from 60 meters all the way out to around 100 meter so you got a 40 meter range in which you can one shot kill without a headshot and then it drops back off to 80 so it's always going to be doing 80 damage no matter what and occasionally a bit more than 80 if you're at that sweet spot of course the sweet spot is pretty far away and when using iron sights it can be very hard to hit somebody with this weapon not impossible by any means and certainly i was shooting people but uh, for the most part medium range is where i was using this weapon uh, as the description suggested now i do really love Love the lever action animation on this weapon. It does mean that your gun's got to do a little bit of a bounce between shots, so uh, it's not going to have that nice effect of the straight pull bolt that you might get with some of the other rifles. 
but it's just got a very iconic feeling to it when using it. It definitely feels like a cowboy rifle. Now, as for the sidearm, the number three revolver is definitely something you might've seen in the Wild West. It's a 44 caliber uh, revolver, although it's not like the 44 Magnum. That's a bit of a bigger round than this one, though it doesn't mean it can't do a lot of damage. In fact, this revolver will do 53 damage in close quarters, though it has a very steep drop off. So as soon as you start going slightly beyond close quarters you're not going to be doing 53 anymore it's going to drop off drastically so you don't want to use it at long range at all and even so in close quarters you will not be able to get the one shot headshot kill anymore because of the new headshot multiplier in battlefield one if you're hoping for a 44 magnum look-alike for battlefield one this is not quite it it might seem like a 44 magnum but once you start using it you're going to realize you're going to have to go for that two shot body shot most of the time it's certainly not a terrible sidearm and i do like getting the two shot body shot in close quarters the point at where this weapon really starts to disappoint is once somebody just gets a little bit further away from you not only is the damage going to go way down but the muzzle velocity on this gun is painfully slow at 210 meters per second which means you're going to have to lead like crazy just to get a little bit of a distance shot now it Admittedly, running with the golden number three revolver skin on this gun does make it feel a lot cooler when you're running around with it. Uh, it just glistening everywhere you take it. It looks like a very special weapon, though I don't think it would be even close to my top choices of handguns when it comes to running with anything for a sidearm. I mean, I'm so used to the 1911, but man, is that gun far more effective than this one. However, if you can guarantee your body shots, this one will drop people pretty damn quick in close quarters. It helps though if they're not returning fire. And as the loadout suggested, I should be using this in close quarter engagements anyway. And in fact, I prefer using it over the Russian 1895 in close quarters simply because it's a bit more of a guaranteed kill. It shoots faster and it does enough damage to two shot in close quarters. I'd have to do the exact same thing with the Russian 1895. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to try and body shot somebody with the Russian 1895 in CQB and then switch to the sidearm because the switch process is pretty much longer than just getting two shots off with this pistol instead. So it just makes sense to run with this out if you know you're going to be running into somebody very close. And like all revolvers in the game, the hip fire is pretty darn decent. So if you got to throw on that gas mask, almost guaranteed switch to the revolver, you'll have a much better chance of coming out on top. Now I recorded all of my gameplay in the operations game mode. Uh, I used to record a lot of my loadout gameplay in TDM game modes back in Battlefield 4 because it was an easy way to get a lot of infantry kills and show some cool footage. I'm finding that operations has been a lot more fun for me this time around in Battlefield 1, though it can be a little bit tricky when the enemy team gets a big behemoth and they start to rain death on you. The Zeppelin can certainly get in the way of some fun kill streaks, or the airship rather. I don't think it's technically a Zeppelin. Now as cool and as much fun as this loadout is to run, if I was really tryharding, I probably wouldn't take it. If I'm running a sniper rifle, I almost always prefer something with a scope on it, like the SMLE with the Marksman variant or the Russian 1895 sniper. In fact, I really like the Russian 1895 sniper. It's one of my favorite sniper rifles, so getting rid of the scope really makes it hard for me to just deal with having to two-shot most people when I could just be aiming for the head, but it's so hard to do with iron sights. In fact, I had a lot of stationary targets that I was just missing the headshots on because it's really hard to line up with iron sights in this game. As for sidearms, I've already kind of said it, but uh, I'd much prefer the 1911 over the number three revolver. It's not to say that the number three isn't fun. This is definitely a very fun loadout, but in terms of just tryharding and being as effective as possible, the 1911 is my go-to when it comes to consistency. The Frommerstopp is also a great sidearm for the recon class, and a lot of people also like the Mars if you need something that can do a little bit more damage at further ranges. Something that I do find a little bit funny about some of the sniper rifles is that their sweet spots are so far away on some of them that it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to run iron sights. Irons make the most sense on closer range sweet spots. The further and further away your target gets, the less likely you're going to be able to hit them with iron sights and the less sense a long range sweet spot makes. So especially with the Russian 1895, I prefer the scope just to take advantage of the sweet spot. Anyway, 
that pretty much wraps it up for this episode of Loadout. Definitely a fun Loadout, but not one that I would recommend if you're really trying to do as good as you possibly can. Don't forget to leave your comments for next week's episode down below. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off. Thank you.